So one of the goals of Gamergate is to get politics out of gaming journalism. Five seconds in and already you don't know what Gamergate is all about. I have voices in my head, they count for me, they understand, they talk to me. As if there are these magical places where you can talk about games and not have any type of agenda at all. Some like perfectly objective analysis in a very, you know, varying world, right? The, the world changes so quickly and, you know, there are major pop culture events that eventually you have to comment on. But apparently there's no politics that can ever be involved in it. That's like a perfect world for these people. Of course, we all know that this really isn't about journalism. It's about silencing people that they don't like. I doubt that you have any actual evidence to show that Gamergate is nothing more than a group of people who just want to silence the opposing team, even though it's the other way around. Uh, so, please, by all means, show us on how Gamergate is nothing more than a group of people who just want to silence women. But I would thought I would try and explain why this is just a big folly. Mostly because there's no way to get politics out of journalism. Right? I, I mean, what's going on? Like, why are these people so upset? Well, it just so happens that in the news, there's been people like Anita Sarkeesian and other feminists who think that there's a problem with women in video games. Now, what are these agencies supposed to do? Right? Are these websites just supposed to be silent on it and not comment on it? We don't expect them to remain silent. If they want to support the likes of Zoe Quinn and Anita Sarkeesian, I say go for it. Sure, they're total fucking morons, but at least they're doing what they think is right. But the funny thing is, is that there should be at least some people out there that were, that's either either neutral about this, or even against Anita Sarkeesian or Zoe Quinn. But the but all these people who are gaming journalists, the majority of them, gather up in one place and talked about on how they should how they should help Zoe Quinn, and on how. You know, we that these people would declare gamers dead. This is the sort of shit that we're talking about. Overlooking the absurdity of the idea of tens of thousands of people from around the world all gathering together to form an attack mob on three women in a consistent sustained assault for two months and over three million tweets now. If we were to accept Chu's proposition that Gamergate was based almost entirely around the harassment of Zoe Quinn, then it appears Gamergate are doing an exceptionally bad job and focusing far too much on journalistic ethics, because there have been 16,914 tweets this month involving Zoe Quinn from either side, or direct replies to her account, and there have been 1.8 million tweets about Gamergate and people claiming to be concerned about journalistic ethics. It would seem that a committed group of misogynists from around the world who have banded together for two months and three million tweets to attack these three women would have shown a lot more focus than Gamergate appears to have done in this scenario. I don't think anyone would think that's reasonable. Because being silent itself is a political action. It, it, it's essentially agreeing with the status quo. It's funny because the social justice warriors and the feminists have always been trying to silence the opposing team because they fear of what they're going to have to say. So, what they do is basically call out the other side's sexist misogynistic bigots and then they claim that gamers are, are, gamers are dead. That's it. That's the best way that social justice warriors and feminists deal with things. They use pathetic tactics like no instead they have editorial sections where people give an opinion now of course there are good opinions and bad opinions as in there are opinions backed up with evidence and there are terrible opinions aka i don't know uh, the anti-feminists because let's face the facts Anti-feminists, they don't have no fucking evidence whatsoever. They just say whatever is coming out of their mind, and then that's it. They don't provide any evidence. So we should, you know, just say that they're, they're a bunch of bigots. And we should just take your word for it.
Makes sense. Who spout things like, oh my god, it's just biology that makes men better than women, and that's why men like video games, or something like that. Or, you know, just overall just saying capitalism. Or maybe these people are targeting a certain demographic. Just because you're targeting a certain demographic doesn't make it sexist, or racist, or ageist, or whatever prejudice towards a certain group of people. My Little Pony was meant for little girls, and yet it somehow attracted a bunch of grown men. So, um... Is My Little Pony now sexist because a bunch of men enjoy this shit? And by the way, while we're speaking about capitalism, the reason I find this all hilarious is, you know, one of the biggest arguments um, from the Sarkeesian detractors is that the reason that um, video games portray women so poorly or have so much men is because of the bottom line. But at the same time, a lot of these people are agreeing with Gamergate, which is essentially telling, you know, gaming websites to not follow the bottom line and, you know, ethics and journalism. What the fuck are you even talking about at this point? So what is it? Overall, I don't see a very straightforward narrative, but of course, this isn't about ethics. Like, none of these people don't know the first thing about ethics or morality. Just something to think about. Take your own fucking advice.